Hey guys, Sean here at the Gardner Center. So we are at the very beginning of the fall planting and decorating season. Temperatures are finally starting to cool off. We finally received some much needed rain and it's a perfect opportunity for me to talk about a group of really popular uh, fall annuals collectively known as the ornamental cabbages and kales. You may also have heard these referred to as flowering cabbage and kale, but um, trust me, we're growing these guys for their foliage, um, definitely not for flowers. So that's a name you'll sometimes hear, but ornamental cabbage and kale, um, like very popular group of plants in the fall. I personally think as far as bang for your buck goes for getting some mileage out of your fall plants, these are the as about as good as it's gonna get for um, getting bang for your buck and getting uh, long lasting plants. So I wanna take some time today and just kind of, you know, give you the lowdown on what these guys are, um, what they're gonna do, how long they're gonna last, and uh, answer a question that almost everyone asks about these, which is, can I eat them? And the short answer is yes, but I'll talk more about that in a minute or two. So ca ornamental cabbage and kale, um, these guys are very closely related, and I mean very closely related to the uh, cabbage and kale you might see in the produce aisle. These have been bred specifically for looks though, not for eating. So they've been bred for shape, they've been bred for color, that sort of thing. We don't have to split hairs and get too worried about whether you're buying a cabbage or a kale. Um, a good way to tell the difference between the two and the way they're kind of generally kind of classified is the cabbages tend to have smooth round leaves like you see here and over here and the kales tend to have either serrated or frilly or strappy leaves like you see here but like they both grow the same and do the same thing so you don't have to worry too much about whether you're buying a cabbage or a kale um these guys love the fall because these guys not only did they love cool weather but they actually get better as it gets colder so these guys, they're happy, they're happy place as far as temperatures go. It's really gonna be between like 35 degrees and 75 degrees. So that's a big range of temperatures there. And I don't mean they're gonna survive down to 35. They're gonna be happy and keep growing down to 35. They'll survive temperatures well below freezing. Um, so fall is definitely the time to plant these. Um, as, the, as the weather gets colder, their color is gonna intensify. So right now you can start to see a little bit of, of color in the, in the centers of the rosettes. You can see a little bit of color coming through in the veins and the leaves. But as the temperature gets cooler, um, that color is going to intensify. And after we start getting some frosty nights and even more so when we start having some actual freezes, these guys are going to really, really pop in, in, your, in your containers and in your landscape. Um, they have no trouble at all with cold temperatures. Um, they typically here, and it depends on our winter. Our winter can be kind of fickle here in Southern Connecticut, but these guys are absolutely gonna get you all the way through Thanksgiving. They very more than likely will take you all the way through Christmas. And I actually think a lot of them, especially the ones with the reds and the white, white coloration, I think a lot of them actually mix well with Christmas greenery. Um, so you can, um, you can, you can um, use them right until, right until Christmas. I've seen them looking good on New Year's Day before. It really depends on our winter and when, how soon it gets cold and stays cold. Um, but these guys are gonna take you through Thanksgiving or at least Christmas, uh, to say the least here in Southern, in Southern Connecticut. And like I said, their color only gets better as time goes by. Um, they will continue to grow. Um, I did a video not too long ago about plants stopping their growing in the fall. These guys want to grow in the fall. So these guys are going to get bigger. They're going to develop more foliage. They're going to get taller. They're going to get wider. Um, they look great massed in beds in the landscape. Um, they also are fantastic, obviously, in containers. Um, so they are really, they're really good. They mix well with, um, like I said, your Christmas greenery at Christmas time but obviously with mums and grasses, things like that for the fall as well. And no flowers, but you can see here, you can get a lot of different colors and textures out of these guys. They, they look fantastic like that. Um, they're very easy to grow. They like a full sun situation. Um, it doesn't have to be full sun all day, but at least maybe five or six hours a day. Um, 
They like water, but they don't like to be super soggy. So just let consistent moisture for them. And again, as the temperatures cool down, you know, and we get rain, water won't be such an issue. Um, so super easy to grow. A lot of people, these pea plants are kind of misunderstood by a lot, but a lot of, they're kind of maligned a bit by people because these are always my go-to when somebody comes in and says, I want to see something that's going to last a long time for the fall. And I'll bring them to these first. But a lot of people are like, well, I don't want those because they look like a vegetable. And, you know, fair enough, because they are a vegetable, but these are vegetables that have a lot going on. So um, they are they definitely belong in your fall, um, in your fall landscape, in your fall containers for sure. <clears throat> on the subject of eating them, they are all technically edible. Um, including the ones that are strictly ornamental. The ones that are strictly ornamental, um, are, they're not poisonous, you can eat them. However, because they've been bred for looks, their flavor is very bitter. <clears throat> so those guys, a lot of people will use them as garnish, um, but they're very bitter. If you buy your plants from a good nursery or garden center, like the Gardener Center, your, your cabbage and kale should have a label in them telling you specifically what kind it is. A lot of times a plant will just have a generic tag saying ornamental cabbage. If, you, if you're shopping at a good nursery or garden center, they're going to have a specific variety name on them. Like this one here is Lansado. Um, you may recognize this from the protocile because this is also called uh, Tuscan kale or dinosaur kale. And this is an edible one. So a lot of these, you know, if you actually know the name of the one you're planting, just hop onto the internet and you're gonna know real quick whether or not it's one that you can use for culinary purposes. So a lot of these guys can live in your fall containers and then do double duty and maybe end up on your Thanksgiving or your Christmas table, dinner table later on in the season. So knowing the variety is gonna be a good way to know whether or not you can eat them. Um, like I said, there's edible kales and some edible cabbages here. This is a this is an actual cabbage that's got to form a head like you'd make coleslaw out of, but look how beautiful it is. Um, so that's an edible one. So guys, whether you're looking to brighten up your fall containers or grow some cool weather vegetables, um, ornamental kales and cabbages are a good place to look. Thanks always for watching and I'll see you next time.